Hey everybody, Tactic Angel back on the PlayStation 5 for a re-review of a ship that recently became available again in World of Warships Legends. That ship is USS Independence, a Tier 5 US light carrier. For this review, we'll start with some analysis on the ship, dive into her stats, and then jump into some gameplay. If you'd like to see my video about the history of Independence, there should be a link to it in the description, as well as time codes for this video. As far as the Independence in-game, it's a premium carrier at Tier 5, and right now it is the only US Navy alternative to the Ranger, which begs the question how she compares to the Tech Tree American carrier. Well, as far as strengths go, the Independence has a pretty strong air group with access to a pretty respectable amount of planes with, in particular, great access to HE dive bombers. Those are generally the bread and butter of American carriers, so it's a good strength to have. She couples this with a well-protected citadel and a pretty good ability to get around the battlefield without being spotted. Where people will likely find independence lacking is the complete lack of any sort of secondary protection. So there's no real penalty for enemies to drive too close to this ship, and once they get there, or pretty much anywhere else within gun range, they'll find independence is an XP pinata for anyone shooting HE. AP may find it hard to find purchase against this ship both from air and by sea because of how well situated the Citadel is, but it's also worth noting that the ship has surprisingly poor AA for a carrier, particularly for a US carrier, and that may be a little concerning because every one of the games you'll play, at least in standard battle, will also include an enemy carrier. Folks who are likely to enjoy independence are naturally the subset of people who enjoy playing carriers but maybe want a less stressful experience than playing at Tier 7. At Tier 5, there are presently only three premium carriers, and they're all currently pretty competitive. This one offers the traditional dive bombing experience better than Zwiho or Ark Royal, which has carpet bombs, and it avoids some of the baggage that comes with playing Ark Royal, even if a lot of that baggage no longer applies. And if you're American, it does give you the chance to play a US Navy ship without some of the problems intrinsic to Ranger. Technically, since you can currently earn it for free, she's earnable by folks who are just interested enough to want to play a tier 5 flat top, but who can't imagine spending money on one. So hopefully the 5 people who are interested in this ship will watch this video, otherwise it's just Tactic Angel rambling on about a ship you don't care about. And if you made it this far, then it's probably not the first time. You know what comes next, we're going to jump into stats, everything should be base statistics, and I think everything I'm comparing it to is also base statistics, but these numbers have changed so many times that I'm just gonna say this isn't my fault if it's wrong. I did my best, and it's probably gonna change again anyway. Starting off with survivability, the independence isn't particularly well defended. With just 39,000 hit points for health, that's a couple thousand off the average at tier five. And most of what you see here is very susceptible to HE damage, including notably the deck. One of the things that isn't modeled in the statistics, but that works in her favor as a carrier, is that she's a bit smaller. Here you can see her compared against Ranger for size, so that will help avoid some hits, particularly from air. The other thing is that if we strip away the armor, you have both a low citadel and one that is relatively well armored. It's situated nicely around the waterline, and unlike a certain other American carrier, that makes it a bit more forgiving because she not only has the best Citadel armor on the sides of any tier five carrier, but she also has a torpedo bulge that apparently doesn't do anything other than provide a void to her HE pen chances. After that, we get to talk about the Independence's air group. And it is a sort of familiar topic for American carriers with relatively slow, relatively long ranged aircraft. And unlike her cousin, Saipan, Independence HE bombers are probably the more effective and more dangerous of the two squadrons. In that capacity, you have Hell Divers. They currently have the best range at tier five at 31 kilometers. Their HP is a little low, but thanks to a full deck of 18, an obtuse plane restoration time of 88 seconds for three planes, the Independence has the fastest plane restoration among dive bombers at the tier, and the highest potential planes for that type. That gives the total amount of HP for her dive bombers, I think just barely the best HP of any dive bombers as a squadron at the tier. The 5,700 damage bombs she drops are on the high side of average, 
though they do have a surprisingly low fire chance per bomb. And I really do mean that as surprisingly low, because when I played these, I got a fire just about every time. Your other squadron are the vaunted TBF Avengers. Their range is just a bit above average, attack in groups of eight, and thanks to the low HP pool, you'll probably only be able to get two attacks off against anything other than the most poorly defended targets. They come with an almost equally obtuse reload time, but this time you're restoring only two aircraft at a time, which puts your plane restoration a bit more in line with other carriers at the tier, though you'll end up with an average number of torpedo bombers thanks to low HP. The overall survivability of this side of your air wing is a bit on the low side. But as for the torpedo itself, it's relatively slow, though it does pretty good damage, 600 points more than Ranger. The ideal use for your squadrons here is probably to get as many Hell Divers as you can, and as your deck runs down a little, use your Avengers to try to cause permanent floods against targets that have used their damage control party. Against teams with really poor AA protection, you can occasionally use only the superior Hell Divers just because of how many planes you can get in the air at any given time, and the uneven plane restoration helps that. That said, you can't start floods with HE bombs, so food for thought, but this is pretty typical US carrier gameplay. As we jump into AA, you may have noted we skipped something, but we didn't. Let's not get sidetracked though. We skipped artillery, because you don't have any secondary battery. You're the only carrier at the tier without secondaries, so don't expect the ship to defend itself at sea. And from the air, it's not that great either. With a base range of 3.5 kilometers, you aren't gonna drive too many attacks off before getting hit, and the overall DPM is still about 10% below average. Granted, your combat air patrol ought to dissuade a lot of this sort of behavior, but if you've already taken some damage and have a particularly determined attacker, independence can make for an easy target. The ship does have decent maneuverability though, she is a hair faster than most carriers at 31.5 knots, has a very tight turning circle for a carrier, and dead average rudder shift. When looking at concealment, independence is good, though not great, having a 200 meter advantage by both sea and from the sky. Next to speed, which are also pretty good at, this is mostly my favorite stat for carriers, so that's something. And We'll take a brief intermission before we get to the good part. I'll say this. The first thing veteran independence players may notice is that this ship has SB2C Helldivers and TVF Avengers. And I would like to say this is the single best thing to come out of the CV rework for a couple of reasons. Because remember, I said this. We decided to launch TBD Devastators. Uh, this will give us a little bit of time to explore some fun facts about the air group here. Not only does this look strange having wildly differently painted aircraft, this sort of shenanigan would never have happened in reality. For one, this paint job is essentially a pre-World War II paint job being phased out in the early part of 1941. A less fun fact about this is that the Devastator was also kind of a terrible torpedo bomber and got a lot of U.S. Navy aviators killed because of it. Though not officially retired, of the 41 Devastators launched by the Enterprise Yorktown and Hornet at Midway, only six of those returned. Uh, even if the U.S. Navy had liked this plane, of the 130 Devastators built, there were less than 40 remaining in all of the U.S. Navy after Midway. Uh, the better choice for this ship would probably have been the Avenger, uh, obviously in blue, since it was not only in service at the time, but also as a plane that was used on Independence. So that's right, not only does the deck of the Independence no longer look like a mid-century used car lot, but it also means that the ship has the more historically appropriate aircraft, and maybe even more important than that, I have successfully risen on the Nostradamus scale for predicting things from an impressive zero to now one. We're on the board. In all seriousness though, I hear that this was due to the persistent, persuasive efforts of one or possibly more players out there. And 
I don't know exactly who it is or what they said, what the magic words are. There are certainly a couple of folks out there that I can see in the Discord who've been saying kind of the same thing. So if you're one of them or somebody else I don't know, thank you. I, of course, also expressed this opinion in my video, but I assume Wargaming didn't watch it since that good AA thing has been there for two years. In any case, you can see my commander up on the screen. I have made a couple of changes to how I like to play American Carriers, one of which is that I've put Helfrich in the second slot. That's going to help me get one extra knot, pretty much, on how fast my ship is. That will help if I ever need to run away from something. Uh, he also helps with the AA. That will help me more on other carriers that I obviously am going to use the same commander for. I will also mention that I did try this out with King's other ability that increases the speed of your dive bombers. It's not a bad choice. I'm not 100% sure that it's worth it for four knots because that's two and a half percent. Question is whether you want more fighters or if you want a little extra speed. In any case, we're already in the thick of things. You can see we're lining up a second run on the Tennessee. We wanted to try to get at least 10 seconds. Flying away from the battleship, waiting to see if he uses that damage con. It looks like he pressed it pretty much immediately. So if we turn around, fly 10 seconds back, then he should be vulnerable again to another fire. And it works, so now we're cooking. We're gonna go ahead and put up some torpedo bombers. And this is exactly what we were talking about back in the air group section. We've already burnt his damage control. Now we're gonna try to apply a flood. And the reason the flood's better is it does more damage. Also, if we set too many fires, he might have fight fire with fire. This particular maneuver right here is because I don't think that I'll be able to attack the Tennessee twice. You can see he's right up against that island, and obviously these are torpedo bombers. They require a little bit of a run-up in order to be effective. And so we'll just get this off and then immediately recall. That, that wasn't a prediction, and I didn't watch it beforehand. It was just the only logical thing for me to do. Autopilot mode enabled. With most of the enemy team starting to abandon this side of the map, we will go ahead and move our carrier forward. We are, after all, playing a floating plane factory, and our consumers are the enemy team. They may not want our product, but darn it, we're going to give it to them. So best way to do that is location, location, location. Not a lot of damage there, but he's not going to be in the game for very much longer. And you can see we're taking plenty of losses here. And rather than take in the low HP planes that I had left, we're going to go ahead and recall them to get some more torpedo bombers. Now this might be a bit of a mistake because if I get my deck above 13, which is very likely to happen here in the next minute, then I'm basically eating into the maximum budget that I would have for dive bombers. It's not really a big deal because I'm going to have enough planes. I, I very rarely have run out with independence. It's just that the value of my torpedo bombers are lower, in my opinion, from the start. And then I've also built into dive bombers. So I want to use as many of those as possible. And darn it, I think I would have hit him. 
That said, Furutaka might be one of the more terrible AA ships that are out there at the tier. So we have we have enough HP to make one more run. So we are able to get a third set of torpedoes out on the Iron Duke. Um, we're lucky in the sense that we did get two hits, but I was kind of hoping, nay, one might say counting on, getting a flood. And reason for that is usually if you hit somebody in the nose, or in the bow, so to speak, you have a better chance of getting a flood. But uh, clearly we hit him twice, and we came away with kind of nothing. So these second set of torpedo bombers was really to, to try to exploit the flood I was expecting to get. We hit them two more times with torpedoes and still no love. And it looks like we might be able to get in a third. This is going to be... Gonna require a little bit of cooperation on his part because he's a bit too close to this island i think um, for the uninitiated this orange section of the targeting is the amount of run up you need before your torpedoes will arm so those were kind of pointless whether or not he died they weren't going to do any damage now we are nice and close to a uh, couple of oncoming ships. Here we have a New Mexico. Pretty good AA American battleship, obviously. We land five bombs and we're gonna circle back. Now, we probably haven't given it enough time here because we're kind of getting a little panicky about how close those ships are getting to us. So this would be a good time to leave. Um, one of the things that I anticipate with this position is that I will be able to go either north or south, depending on where they're going, and hopefully avoid being shot a whole bunch of times. But there, he's obviously out of his Damacon. I think before, uh, we actually had a 0% fire chance since he would have had 20 seconds of immunity to that. Now we're gonna come back and this time we're gonna hit the Pensacola with hopes of kind of spreading out the damage and keeping that damage over time going. We don't wanna get into a situation where if that guy has the baked potato skill, which is fight fire with fire. We don't want to put out that fire for him. We want him to make sure that he burns for as long as possible. Now it does look like our carrier is still moving in the right direction, but we might not have left ourselves quite enough time. We immediately start attacking that corner with torpedo bombers, uh, pretty Pretty decent time lining those up. I'm gonna take these in against New Mexico to continue to kind of distribute the damage over time. Uh, kind of your job. As we jump back to the carrier though, something has gone terribly wrong. And I can tell you both of the things that happened. One is that I trusted the autopilot. The autopilot is a little finicky around islands. And I don't know if the autopilot got confused by the island, which is a possibility, or if the autopilot ran into it, which is also a possibility. The other thing is, this is an interesting opportunity to point out, though I've already done this during this review, that Independence has no secondary battery. Now, you might have missed it, but that Pensacola had basically zero hit points when I left her. So one or two hits there might have actually made a difference in spite of everything that I've said 
uh, trying to persuade you that not having secondaries isn't a big deal. So take it from me. Don't listen to my advice. Does that work? In any case, we can probably tell where this particular match is going. We're going to move on to a win. There you can see in the foreground the Pensacola sinking beneath the waves. So beautiful, so majestic, etc. And we finish off the New Mexico as well and move on to a victory. Which brings us to closing thoughts on independence. With the changes to the Avenger situation on independence, I was really happy to actually revisit this ship. Now I know somebody's going to be like, tact games when nobody asks, and that's not true. There is at least one comment on one of my videos asking for me to re-review this, and since I'm supposed to fly to Europe in a couple of days, I don't have a lot of time to make videos. So I thought, yeah, you know, this will be pretty, this will be okay. In any case, obviously, independence and pretty much every other carrier right now is a floating airplane factory. That's not so good. That said, among floating aircraft factories, this is a pretty competitive carrier, and by far the US carrier at tier five that I would prefer to play, if only to avoid this again. Yeah, it sucks being run up on, and it's not all that common really that your secondaries would save you in those cases, but we did see one here. That said, this is a tier five carrier, and if you're considering it at all, you should pay attention to the map rotation because at least currently you play a lot of these games on the mini versions of normal sized maps, which makes charging you either intentionally or because maybe everyone at tier five is just a bit too used to playing against the AI, that can happen more often than you'd like. A free ship is a free ship though, but choosing independence may mean that you don't get some other thing that you might have also wanted. Those are the pros and cons as far as I can see them, and my thoughts on the updated independence as she exists in August 2024. So if you're a person from the future commenting that everything's wrong here, it might not be my fault. Check out ye old history video linked in the description if you want. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.